expect to see you this morning. What time did you get in last night? I think it was about one o'clock in the morning. Oh, what a drive. I gave up on you. I just figured you, you were going to step there another night or something. Well, I thought about it, but I've got a stack of files on my desk this deep that need updating. Mm. So I really can't put it off any longer. Yeah. Hey, you want some orange juice? No, thanks. So, uh, Lori's still the same, I suppose. Yeah. I can't understand why she just got up and walked down on us. You saw it coming, though, didn't you? Mm-hmm. I saw that look in her eyes on Thanksgiving, and I just knew she wasn't going to be ready to go out with Ben the next day. Yeah, their anniversary. For once in my life, I wish I was wrong. Oh, how I wish I was wrong. Hello. Hello, oh, I own? Babs? Hey, it's me, all right. Oh, praise God, girl, where are you? Well, I'm in a phone booth right now. Oh, I've been so concerned about you and wondering how you're getting along. Yeah, I, that's sort of why I called. I figured you would be worried, and I just wanted to say that everything's oh. okay. But where are you? I can't tell you that. Babs! Look, you just gotta trust me, that's all. It, it's better for everybody if no one knows where I'm at right now. Oh, I don't like the sound of that, Babs. Yeah, I know, but you just gotta trust me, that's all. Oh, well, you know I do, Babs. Hey, what about Miriam? Well, no one seems to know where she is. We just haven't heard a word. Nothing? Well, they found her car the other day. No kidding, where? Well, you know that tollway zone around the corner. You mean on Franklin? The police found Miriam's car and towed it away. Oh, wow, so... That means she did come home that night. Or she tried to. I don't know what to make of it. I don't know, first Miriam's disappearance and then you up and leave without so much as even a goodbye. Oh, I'm no good at that. I never have been. Besides, you probably would have just tried to talk me out of it anyway. You bet I would have. We want you to just come on home. Hey, remember what Gene said. It's just not safe. Oh, nonsense. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Yeah, well, he does this time. It's better for everybody if I just... Just maintain a low profile right now, that's all. Oh, but how, for how long will you be gone? I don't know. It's, it's hard to say. I may not ever be able to come back to Kingsley. Oh, I don't want you talking like that. I don't even want you thinking like that. I don't want to, but... I, um... Would you say a little prayer for me? Oh, honey, I've been praying for you all along. We miss you, and we want you to be back here where you belong. Thanks. Hey, would you say hi to Harold for me? Oh. And tell him, tell him the Cliff Jackson file is under W. I, I know he's been looking for it. Uh, but Babs, Babs. We had a lot of Jacksons, and so I, well, he'll understand what I mean. Hey, I, I, I gotta go. This is eating up all my change. Well, now, Babs, now, now you take good care of yourself. Sure. Hey. Say hello to everybody for me, will you? I will. Goodbye. Goodbye. My psych teacher was saying just the other day, she's talking about regression. He said it's when people don't want to face a bad experience. Now that's what Lori's going through. Yeah, but Peter, the last time I saw Lori before Thanksgiving, she was doing so much better. She's never been a predictable person, though. Yeah, but to be so ambivalent and afraid. She's gonna bounce back, you'll see. Oh, dear God, I hope so. Well, what about Ben? I don't know, he was gonna come back to Kingsley for a day or so, but um, now that Lori's taking a turn for the worse, it's hard to tell. Knowing Ben, he'll stay up there until she's better. 
He loves her so much, but it hurts me to see him ignoring everything else. In his hand. Yeah, that and his practice, his patients, the clinic. I think Ben is finally beginning to realize that he's got other responsibilities. He can't neglect that part of his life. Are you feeling okay? Maybe you ought to stay here and get some sleep today. No. Best thing for me to do is to go to work. Besides, all that paperwork will keep my mind off things. You gotta be exhausted. Hey, if you don't mind, you let me do the mothering? <laughs> okay. If I have to, I, I can leave early. Say, so what's your schedule today? Well, after school, I go to Prescott Development. You gonna be here for dinner? Yeah, around you know, six-ish. Okay, well, I'll fix a good dinner and we'll have a nice, quiet, restful evening at home. Good. But you better get to bed early. Yes, sir. That's one command I won't have any trouble obeying. Here, come in. Mrs. Webster, it's Ion Redlin. Oh, <laughs> Mrs. Redlin. How are you? It's good to see you. Would you sit down? Oh, thank you very much, but I'm not going to stay but a minute. I just wanted to let you know that Babs called me this morning. Did she? Well, uh, how is she? Well, I know how concerned you are about her. She just wanted to let you know that everything is okay. Yeah, of course that's what she says. It's what she always says. Mm -hmm. Did she say where she was? No, but I could tell it was long distance. Mr. Webster, I'm awfully concerned about her. Yeah, I am too. I'm worried about uh, what she's living on. I mean, I, I know she hasn't got very much money with her. You, you, you don't think that she's, uh... You don't think she what? Well, well, it's just that after everything you've done for her, it'd be a shame if she went back to her old line of work. Well, after everything that you've done for her, I think it would be totally impossible for her to go back to her old line of work. I thought you two had that straightened out. Well, yeah. I suppose. Well, don't suppose nothing. Just trust her. We have to. She's not going to let us down. She's not going to let herself down. What Babs was before is certainly not what she is now. I hope you're right. Oh, I'm right. And she asked about how you were. Did she? Mm. Oh, and she wanted me to tell you that the fire for Cliff Jackson is under W. For Will? Of course. Now, why didn't I think of that? You know, I really miss that girl, Miss Redland. Oh, don't we all? Don't we all? Mr. Webster, what about Miriam? Any news? I got my man McCormick working on it, but the only thing he's come up with is that she did not go to Canada to visit her mother. Oh. You know, this has gone on long enough. I think I'm going to pay that Mr. Brubaker a visit. It's high time the police became a little more involved in this case. Sergeant Brubaker says he's working on it. <laughs> well, surely by this time they must have something to go on. Yeah, one would think. Mm. Well, thanks for stopping by. Oh, it was my pleasure. And listen, don't you give up on Babs. She needs our confidence more than she ever did now. You're right. And good luck with Sergeant Brubaker. I hope that you are able to get more out of him than I have been able to. Oh, I intend to try. I intend to try. Good day. Bye-bye, Ms. Redland. Harold Webster's law office. This is Harold Webster speaking. Uh, this is Cardello. I need to see you this morning. Yeah, well, sure, Vince. Uh, what about? I'll discuss that with you when I see you. Okay. Uh, i got to meet somebody downtown about 9.30. Look, after that, I'm going over to the hospital to see Charles. You want to come along? No. I'll be in your office at 11 o'clock. Okay, I guess it's fine. I guess I'll be back by then. I'll be there. All right. Uh, regards to Charles. Yeah, sure, sure. Bye. Bye. How are you feeling this morning? Better. Or at least I should be. Dr. Greeley stopped by here earlier this morning. He says I may be able to go home soon. Well, that's wonderful. I'm sure you were glad to hear that. I suppose so. Now that Miriam's run off, I really don't know what to do. I can't go back to an empty house. I need someone there to take care of me. You know, how, how could she leave me at a time like this? She hasn't left you, Mr. Carpenter. Then where is she? I don't know. If I did, I'd tell you. Uh, even if she went up to see Helen, she could at least make a telephone call. Why has she turned against me? Now, please don't think that. How can I not think it? I wish I had something definite to tell you, Mr. Carpenter, but I've been out of town for a few days. I went up to Fairmont to visit Lori. Oh, she's doing better, I hope. 
She was for a while, and now we're not so sure. She seems to have taken a turn for the worse. Oh. Well, I'm, I'm really sorry to hear that. Of course, we're praying that it's only a temporary setback. I'm really looking forward to having the whole family back together again at Christmas. Speaking of family, uh, have you heard anything lately from your sister Nancy? No, I, I haven't been in touch with her for quite a while. Why do you ask? Oh, no particular reason. And don't misunderstand me. I have no intention of either seeing or talking to that woman as long as I live. However long that is. Mrs. Davidson, where is Mim? Why hasn't she come here to be with me? There. Well, I'll see you later. And I'm glad to hear that you're feeling better. Mrs. Davidson. Yes? Is there something about Miriam that you're not telling me? Has anything happened? Has she been hurt? You're not keeping anything from me, are you? I don't know where she is, Mr. Carpenter. I wish I did. I'm sorry. Charles? Ms. Davidson, hi. Well, well, come in, Harold. Nice to see you again, Mr. Webster. Yeah, how's the uh, patient doing? Well, according to Dr. Greeley, very well. He's going to be going home soon. To what? That's great news. It is good news. Listen, um, I've got to be going. If I hear anything, I'll let you know. Thank you, Mrs. Davidson, very much. Goodbye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, Mr. Mr. Davidson. Davidson. Well, uh, when does Greeley think you can go home? I don't want to go home. Why should I go when Miriam's not there? What has happened to her? Don't you worry about it. She'll turn up. I got one of my best investigators on, a private man. One of your best investigators? Yeah, McCormick. You know him. He's you mean she really is gone? Do you also mean that no one knows where she is? But just calm down, Charles. Don't get upset about it. Don't She'll get upset. Up. You've just told me that my daughter has disappeared and you tell me not to get upset. Now, what has happened? Well, it, it was, uh, it was on the night of uh, your operation. She, uh... Well, she disappeared. I mean, nobody's seen anything of her since then. But uh, they found a car parked not too far from Miss Redland's house. Oh, in that neighborhood, anything could happen to her. Oh, I never should have let her move there. Charles, the police are working on it. Everybody's doing the best they can. There's no evidence of any foul play. How could you keep this from me? Well, we didn't know anything to tell you at the time, Charles. That's all. But uh, don't get upset about it. Now, all we can do now is just wait. Well, there's something else I need to talk to you about. It's about Hollister Mall. Oh, don't bother me with that. You take care of it. Vince Cardello wants to bring his son in on the administrative staff. His son? Well, are there any available openings? Not that I know of. Well, that's not a good idea at all. I don't like it. If you'll recall, Vince was the one who said originally that he didn't think there should be any connection at all between Hollister Mall and uh, Cardello Enterprises. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I told him. I didn't think it was a good idea, but uh, I did want to have your opinion on it. Well, if he wants to remain anonymous, uh, I think we should steer clear of the whole thing. Including his son? Including his son. Terry! <laughs> Dave Phillips! Oh, how good to see and you. And you, please, sit down. Well, thank you. You know, Ben told me that you might be coming back to Kingsley soon. Yep, finally made the move. Terry. I'm glad to be home. How long have you been in town? Oh, just a couple of days. I've been trying to get in touch with Ben, but haven't been able to reach him. Ben's still in Fairmont with Lori. I just got back from there last night. Terry, uh, yes, I am i can't tell you how sorry I am. Uh, Alex told me all about it. Thank you. The past few months have been difficult for us. Well, I'm really sorry. She'll come out of it, Lord willing. I know she will. But listen, tell me about yourself. Ben said that things didn't go quite as you expected back in Ohio. No, they didn't. I went back there to try to work things out with my wife, but when I got there, I found out that her mother had died, and after settling the estate, well, Kate just took off. Nobody seemed to know where she went. I was hoping she'd come back to Ohio, but she didn't. Terry, I've changed. I want her to know the kind of man I am now. Yes, that would make a difference. Well, I hope so. I want to prove to her that I'm worthy of her love. Listen to me carrying on like this. Please forgive me. No, that's all right. Oh, Alex took me down to see the clinic the other day. The facilities are perfect. We even had a patient come in while we were there. You did? Right off the street. Well, Alex treated him, of course. I mean, what else could he do? Alex told me that quite a few people have been dropping by. Really? Yeah, those people in Chesterfield can't wait for the clinic to open. That wonderful facility just sitting there. It's a shame, isn't it? Yes, it is. And that's the other reason I came back to Kingsley. You really are excited about it, aren't you? <laughs> you bet I am. 
Oh, but Alex tells me that Ben has lost a little of his enthusiasm. It's true. He's been so concerned about Laura, he hasn't had time to think about anything else. Well, I can't blame him for feeling the way he does, but I just hope that his anger doesn't, well, kill his dream. I mean, I know the toll bitterness can take on a person. I just wish he could put the whole experience out of his mind. So you know what, Dave? You might be just the person Ben needs right now, somebody to get him started again. Get that clinic open. It's high time. Oh, yes, I'm sorry I'm late, Vince. I thought I'd get back sooner than this. Oh, what happened to that little secretary of yours? Oh, well, uh, she's on uh, vacation. Vacation, huh? Where'd she go? Um, well, I'll tell you the truth, it uh, came up so quick, I'm not really sure. Ah. Yeah. Uh, sit down. Too bad she left you in the lurch like that. Well, it's not so bad. Uh, I got some temporary help comes in, do some typing and filing. Other than that, uh, I get along. You really think she's coming back, Harold? Why are you so interested in Miss Farley? Just curious, Webster. Miss Farley's a, quite a character. Actually, I came by to find out if you've had the time to check out the situation over at Hollister Mall. Uh, yeah, I, uh, asked Charles about it this morning. He concurred with my initial opinion. That there's no room there for my son? Well, he reminded me that it was your idea to keep Hollister Mall as far removed as possible from the Cardello name. Well, I don't think I have to remind you that I still own 51% of that enterprise. I could name Russ president of Hollister Mall, and there's nothing anybody could do about it. That's true. But would it really be in your best interest? Russ and I don't even share the same surname. Well, how long do you think you keep that under wraps? If you insist, we can find him something over there, no question about that, but I just don't think it's good business. You said so yourself. Look, I understand your reluctance, but Russ is a good man. He could be an asset to Hollister Mall. All I ask is that you consider the consequences. Agreed? Enough said. Vince, there's something else I want to ask you about. You remember I uh, told you about Miriam Mason? Yeah, what about her? I can use your help in locating her. Me? If she's really been kidnapped, you could find out about it, couldn't you? I don't know anything more about it than you do. Vince, you've got connections, connections that I don't have. You could ask. I don't walk in the sewer. I pay people like you to do that for me. People like me are looking for Miriam. I'll see what I can do. Thanks, Vince. I'm really worried about her. You know, Dave, I promised Peter a home-cooked meal tonight. I was wondering if you'd join us. Oh, Terry, I couldn't. I, I wouldn't want to impose. Impose? You'd be doing me a favor. You can't fix lasagna for just two people. <laughs> Even with Peter's appetite? Ah, his reputation gets around. <laughs> <laughs> well, a boy his age, it's only natural. How's he doing? I can hardly believe it. He is a freshman at Kingsley College, and he's got a partial scholarship from Prescott Development. Oh, that's great. What's he majoring in? He hasn't decided yet on a major. He's taking some liberal arts courses, and he's working part-time at Prescott Development. Oh, you must be very proud of him. I am. And I know Scott would be, too. You know, Terry, you're very lucky that you and Peter are so close. <laughs> my relationship with my daughters leave a lot to be desired. And my son. You know, he would be about Peter's age if uh, he had lived. How long has it been, Dave? You know, five years, Christmas Eve. If I only hadn't been drinking that night. Five years, not a day goes by that I don't think about it. Dave, you've been forgiven. Now that you've accepted Jesus, that burden has been removed from you. Well, you're right, of course, but sometimes it's hard to remember. I know, but that's the reason that Jesus came. To take your burden and your guilt upon himself, because he loves you. I was just reading this morning. It was Isaiah. The Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Amazing. Yes, it is. Well, I just can't wait to get this clinic open now. Well, you will join us for dinner tonight, won't you? I'd love to. Do you remember how to get to our house? It's just down the road from the old Cummings place, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Sure, I remember. Oh, is there anything I can bring? A big appetite. Well, 
I don't know if I can compete with Peter, but I'll give it a try. <laughs> Listen, I've got to get back to the office, but I will look forward to seeing you tonight. And I'm looking forward to it. Bye-bye. Where is it? Oh, Babs, you have done it to me again. I hope that agency sends me somebody who can type and file. Harold Webster's office, Webster here. Harold, you old son of a gun. Babs? The one and only. Oh, where are you? Oh, I can't tell you. I, I wasn't even gonna call you, but something just came over me. Yeah, Ms. Redmond was in here this morning. She told me that you called her. Oh, yeah. That's sweetie. Hey, did she tell you where to find the Jackson file? Yeah, she sure did. Thank you. I don't know what I would do without you. Do you miss me? You know I do. You need anything, any money? No. No, I've got enough to last for a few more days anyway. Yeah, and what about after that? I don't know, I'll think of something. Look, ma'am, if you, if you need anything, anything at all, let me know. Promise. Hey, yeah, sure. Listen, I own said that they found Miriam's car. Um, yeah, it was uh, in, in a tow-away zone. Did they find her purse? No, uh, I checked on that. No, she must have it with her. I thought so. I, I just thought I'd ask. Yeah. Look, Babs, I'm, I'm worried about you. Uh, now you. You don't have to tell me where you are or anything, but look, you got my phone number at home. Keep in touch, okay? Sure I will, Harold. Sure I will. Hey, take care of yourself. You too. Well, look, I gotta go now. It's been nice talking to you. Yeah, uh, bye. Bye.